Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Okay, just testing that just to make sure the uh, the old um, shit was working. Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to a continuation of the series which I started three months ago. <laughs> I should do more drunk visual novel playthroughs, but, you know, being a leftist anime channel, you know, this... This right here is the one that we keep coming back to. Greetings, comrades. Greetings. Hello. I love you all. I really fucking appreciate you guys. Like, I wish I could take, like, a photo and put it up on stream, but I have a whole bottle of Russian Standard right next to me. Which is like pretty much like drinking diesel fuel, but I'm half a bottle of absolute in. I may vomit, but you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where I'm like, like, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to do these things, you know, you've got to, you got to keep the content, you got to keep the content classy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, I don't lie when I'm drunk, of course, because I have to be drunk to play these visual novels, because they're bad, they're intentionally bad, but, but, like, like, if you want to know, how it's going boys i can uh, i can do this i am cracking a cold one with the the boys right here yeah so <laughs> this content is for me to cringe about in the morning when um, we review this but yeah uh <laughs> i like doing these live streams because i get to interact with my audience which is something that i i don't do enough So how's everyone doing this great day? <sighs> All right. All right. So here we are, guys. When we last left off. When we last left off. Our two beautiful beautiful communist waifus or juche waifus rather were making fun of me were making fun of me for grabbing the titty uh specifically jong's titty the uh beautiful army girl on the left um look guys i know we all love nkvd waifu but um uh i'm i'm, I'm gonna say like uh <laughs> Jean got game, alright? I'm not normally an Opai gang, but just what a woman right there, you know what I mean? What a woman right there, so <sighs> Oh, motherfucker Man Russian standard is like drinking diesel fuel oh. Let's see if I can remember how to do the voices, shall we? Alrighty, uh, I was south. It was uh, I, I was doing a southern accent for our uh, main character here. So uh, it's nice to see you two getting your har hars in at my expense. Well, I thought all you Americans were proficient in cutting edge technology, yet you cannot even work basic texting functions on modern cell phone bleat. The phone you gave me, as well as the ones that you have, are not on the cutting edge. <laughs> yes, of course my name's Juan Posadas. Who else would it be? 
They're dinosaurs from the 90s. Only old people use those models anymore. I'm guessing you never even got to see the phone that was confiscated from me, did you? Not really, no, Brian. But I am certain it was not anything close to what you are using now. If only she knew how right she was, whilst still being incorrect. That reminds me, I have to charge my phone for the day. I'll be right back. Anyway, I'm not used to the type of phone you gave me, so don't take that as an indication of my English skills. <clears throat> Yoonji uses, whips out her phone and taps on the keys like lightning. If you say so, bien. Yoonji sticks her tongue out at me. Thanks for the support. <sighs> Zhang pokes her head back in. I'm sorry, did I interrupt a lover's quarrel? Like it ever with me, bien. We suck up yet. Okay. Oh, be a bit more cheerful, sister. Zhang smiles brightly. Well, ain't you a basket of sunshine today? Did you get good news? It hit me by surprise, one could say. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. If you recall, in the last episode, we grabbed Tiddy. Mm -hmm. That's right, fellas. I avert my eyes as she says this, but I catch her blush as she says it. Hmm. Let us just eat a meat, eggs, and toast. Boiled eggs and toast? Now that sounds pleasantly different. Well, I wanted to... Yeah. Oh, I suck your idea. I wanted to try more in traditional American breakfast. Do not think too much about it, Brian. It was just something I wanted to try. It has nothing to do with you. Wait, you've never had... Boiled eggs and toast before? Well, typically it's boiled rice and kimchi. When is it not rice and kimchi? Lunch is boiled eggs. Rather, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm drunk, forgive me. Lunch is boiled noodles and kimchi. Somehow I think you're missing the point. And what do you eat in your also glorious army? In boot camp it's like... like I don't want to talk about it. Okay, real talk though. MREs. Like, motherfucking, the Americans, like, despite the fact that they bitch about it, the American MREs are fucking great. They get fucking pepperoni pizzas. I remember in the Air Force cadets back in the old days, we, we got, like, fucking chocolate bars. And I remember when I was in the Air Force cadets, we had steak out in the field. And you'd think that sounds fucking great. But when you cook steak in a field kitchen i remember you could use the steak for tires on cars right this shit was rubber I i will take you at your word anyway let's eat oh they're closer now we sit down and yunji serves up boiled eggs and toast as well as some rice and beans simple fare but it's all prepared rather well of course I help clean up afterwards, and it seems the girls are used to that now, so they don't complain. Once they're done, they approach me with their map again. So what date route are we going today? The way you say that makes me think this whole thing has been scripted. Not at all! Now hurry up and decide so we can get ready. Ma'am, yes ma'am. She groans as I salute her while she say while saying this. Well, it's time to look at the map and click a place to go. Alright. Let's go to K Song, boys.
You know, rice with omelette sounds pretty good. I mean, down here in Australia, like, my fat ass, really, for breakfast usually, my fat ass goes the old uh, bacon and egg McMuffin from Macca's on the way to work because it's just fucking easy. But, like, I'm a scrambled eggs and bacon kind of guy, to be honest with you. Although, back in the day, Macca's used to make, oh, excuse me, for you Americans, McDonald's used to make these amazing breakfast wraps, right? And they had scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage in them. It was fucking amazing. And, like, I'm really bummed they don't do them anymore. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm a tad curious as I look at the map. Something about there being a wall built by our president along the border with the occupied territory. According to Yoonji, anyway. Looks like it's directing me to a place called Kaesong, which appears to be pretty close to where I thought I was going in the first place. Y'all, how about we head over to Kaesong? Anything interesting there? Interesting, excuse me. I gotta talk like an American for this one. I'm assuming there is, since it's on this map. Kaesong should be a suitable location for an outing. It does take a bit of time to get there, however. We should prepare ourselves immediately. Can do. What kind of place are we visiting? Kesong is boring, suka. It is mostly history and maybe some industry. If you like temples and academies, then you will be quite happy there. Well, sure, temples and academies can be pretty fun things to see. It's good to know where your culture comes from. I have no need of any history before our beloved original leader finally led us out of the Dark Ages and overthrew our capitalist oppressors. Which is why you'll never get anywhere in the tourism brigade. Your lack of respect of our entire history prevents you from ever getting promoted beyond Hova. What the fuck is that? Mm. Hagup Pyongsa. Well, excuse me if I don't find some long-dead ancestor kept in his chamber pot. Very interesting or not worthy. Please tell me where we're going doesn't require me to dig my own latrine. Make certain you cover it back up with a mound of dirt when you're finished. That was a joke, right? Yunji, she was just teasing me, right? I honestly don't know. My rank doesn't allow me to take tourists to Kaesong. Thank you, the original leader. I don't suppose I can change our destination now, can I? No, in fact, I already sent a text message to the driver, and he'll be here soon. Best make use of the time to get ready. I guess I should gather my stuff, then. <laughs> have fun looking at statues. Yeah, they may even have some caffeine pills around here to keep you awake on the door. I actually like historical docks. I actually like historical destinations, though. Why would anyone want to see some old buildings and read a bunch of plaques that has information you can read in a library book? You can get a sense of history and what your ancestors went through. I can't tell you how many times I visited Gettysburg. Is that a boring temple to Lima Academy? No, it's a battlefield from when my country was at war with itself. The North won. <laughs> Something you wouldn't be familiar with. Interesting. If I ever go to America, I would visit there and learn of about any strategies the North had and see if we can adopt it for when we have to fight off the occupiers from the south of true Korea. Yes, Comrade Yuji. Cast out the imperialists. I don't think you'll get much useful info. This war was back in the 1860s. No planes, tanks, or M16s. Never mind then. Just go and get ready for your date, Blin. It's not a date. Keep telling yourself that and you might start believing it. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll get ready then. And now we're in the car and on our way to Kaesong. A one for your thoughts. 
I don't think that's much of an exchange rate, as I believe the one is worth less than a penny. I haven't checked the rate lately, but I thought it was an English expression. Close enough, I suppose. I wasn't really thinking of anything in particular. May I ask you something? Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. You had best not lie to me. I'll have you know that I ranked top in my class in information extraction. Calm down, Guantanamo girl. It's just an expression. I certainly hope so. I do not do well with liars. Your question? Why, why did you agree to come to Korea? I know we had some nice conversations in our letters, but we had no real hope of you visiting. Well, I figured it might be fun to see a new country. I've spent the better part of my past few years between a couple of deserts. I thought maybe Korea would be a nice change. <clears throat> Was there any other reason? Considering I thought you and Yoonji were guys, I figured we'd go out drinking. Maybe play wingman for each other as we tried to score girls. So you admit you wanted to pick up women in Korea? Well, I did say I'd tell you no lies, so of course I did. Most guys think about going out somewhere and picking up women. It's not really a secret. I just wasn't expecting to get picked up myself. Is it so bad that you're staying with us and you aren't able to go out on the town and find women? Of course not. I mean, I wasn't expecting it at all, but I'm having fun. Plus... I don't have to put in any effort into picking up women since they've already picked me up. It's convenient. Are you implying that we're trying to pick you up? <laughs> Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. You do have a certain appeal, I admit. And I'm not sure why. Maybe your mere presence is the cause. Like you came into our country and everything started revolving around you. <laughs> Anyone else feel like we're playing school days just with an authoritarian dictatorship? Um, this game is called, for the reference there guys, Stay Stay DPRK, My One and Only Trip to North Korea is the name of the game. And it is a parody dating sim. Their new dating sim actually is called, <clears throat> and I quote directly here, My Waifu is the Fuhrer. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. Their new visual novel made by the same guys who made this. All the senior Nazis have been turned into cute anime girls. And I'm really fucking excited to play it. Uh, oh... Oh, this drink, though. Maybe I do feel like I'm being watched constantly. I have no idea what we're talking about. We certainly don't have CCTV working in our humble little home. I didn't mean it like that, but now I'm going to go search my entire room when we get back from this outing. You won't find any ca candy. Yes, that's it. Yunji is the one who hides candy, not me. Maybe we should talk about something else that doesn't make me think I'm being monitored 24-7. <laughs> but it certainly can't be 24-7 since we have regular power outages and Yunji hasn't fixed that generator yet. <laughs> Good one. So, uh, what's there to do at K-Song? Kaesong was the capital area of the Korean peninsula, though it was called Songdo during the dynasty periods. There's a lot of tombs to those ancient kings, but you can't reach most of them. There are museums, however, as well as some temples. Due to its location near the occupied Korean territory, it also has a joint light industrial park, though most of the workers are from true Korea. Wouldn't that be a bit awkward? working with people from over a heavily patrolled border who go back to a different lifestyle? I do not know, but I guess it would seem to make for a very 
silent working environment. Probably so. Anyway, is there any particular place you think we should go visit? The old south gate of Nam Dae Mun would be an ideal place to start. It would likely remind you of a typical East Asian structures that you associate with the region. There's also Song Yung Wan, which houses the Koryo Museum, named for the dynasty it represents. Sean Yong. What? God damn, that's a mouthful. Close enough. Though the most interesting thing is likely to be a tour of the city itself. Most of the historic district isn't exactly in... Hmm. How you would put it? Upper tip shape? Uh, close. That's tip top shape. But a lot of it is run down then, huh? Yes, with the current needs of the country being focused on more... Explosive concerns. <clears throat> Preserving older buildings has fallen down the list of priorities. Nevertheless, the trip there will take some time. How should we amuse ourselves? Well, I guess we could play some sort of travel game, like I Spy or something. Are you admitting to being a spy? I should have taken you to the military police at once. What? No, I'm not a spy. The game is called I Spy. You pick an object and then say, I spy with my little eye something... And then you give a hint, usually a color. Are you making fun of my eyes now? My eyes are hardly little. I can see how you and Yunji are related. Look, it's just the expression in the game is all. There's nothing malicious about it. Uh, maybe not. Okay, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something black. The car? No, not the car. The fragments of pavement you pass off as a road? <sighs> no, and it will be fixed in the future. Something black, something black. The driver's hair? Hey, Jean, was I right? Oh. Looks like something black was the black of her eyelids or the darkness they produce. Guess she was still tired or maybe the car rides do that to her. <sighs> Man, I remember good old Private Daly. Five minutes into a ride and he'd be out cold. Of course, we'd always make sure to mark him up with a black marker. The extra laps were worth the look on his face when Sarge would get him to go to the... would get to him in rank. The road may suck ass, but the view isn't so bad once you get out of civilization and into the woods. Just hope the car doesn't break down, because I highly doubt there are any repair shops out here. That's one thing about the U.S. I miss. You couldn't walk five feet without tripping over a gas station or a mechanic. Out here, if we broke down, I think the only thing we would see would be bears. Or maybe Korean army members hunting bears. Or hunting tourists to feed to bears. Um, uh, glorious leader. Uh, invented karate. Martial arts. I'm sure he did. I think the only exercise the glorious leader gets is the 15 feet he has to walk down to the buffet table. Glorious leader. Prefers family style meat. Please stop reading my thought boxes or I'll be forced to think of things you might not want to see. Already know your favorite things. Yes, they're real. Uh, if I let you use my lap as a pillow, will you go back to sleep and stop reading my thoughts? Deal. Uh, Zhang puts her head in my lap and I gently stroke her hair. It's really silky. I have to admit, it is nice to be the one being pursued instead of chasing the girls from once. With Zhang asleep, there's not much else to do. I'm not tired, so I don't really want to go to sleep, but I don't want to wake up Zhang by playing the radio. And the scenery is out the window is pretty, but it's also not that varied. That leaves one option. 
How long have you been the driver for the two ladies? Sorry, just try to make conversation. Zhang's asleep and you're the only other person in the car. I see. The strong, silent type. I can respect that. Hmm. Well, this has been a good conversation, so I'll be here if you need me. That didn't exactly pass. That didn't exactly pass much time. I suppose I could sleep, but that seems to be such a cheap way of passing time, like an easy out for a navy for a lazy visual novel writer. Screw it. This scene is long enough. I'm going to sleep. Oh boy. Wake up! Wake up! We're here. Well, that was kind of refreshing, though I think my legs fell asleep. Your lap was possibly comfortable. I may require the use of it again for the ride home. You have a funny way of asking to sleep on my lap again. I wasn't asking. I surrender. Yay. Now, on to K-Song. You know, I'm really digging Zhong, man. I, I mean, normally I go for Sundarays, but this chick is doing it for me. We step out immediately from the car, and I'm greeted by a large wooden gate. It's actually pretty massive, and towers all over the other things nearby. God damn. I had the driver take us to the Kaesong Nam Dae Mun, which is the south gate to the old walled city of Kaesong, and the only citadel gate to have survived to the present day. It's really well preserved for being centuries old. I'm impressed. While the base is original, the wooden pavilion is not. The original was destroyed by a certain capitalist country in the 1950s during one of its illegal bombing missions. The construction you see before you is a replication finished in 1954. Oh. I now feel both Odd and also guilty, since I'm pretty sure and pretty certain you all but said the United States destroyed it. Do you know of any other certain capitalist countries? Sure. England, Japan, France, Germany, Canada. No, wait, Canada is basically the snow socialist. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Anyway, tell me more about the gate. The gate houses the Yombok Bell which was brought over here after it was reclaimed from the ashes of the Ombok Temple in the fire of 1563. It used to chime out the hours into the 20th century. Well, that's pretty cool. Does anyone ring it now? Like, maybe you make a wish and ring it to have it come true? Where do you come up with some silly ideas like that? I think I read about it in a visual novel somewhere. A really familiar visual novel. Anyway, I thought you might enjoy seeing that first. What would you like to see next? Any suggestions? Well, there is the Anwasa Buddhist Temple, as well as the Koryo Museum. Would either of those be okay for you? What do you reckon, boys? What do you reckon? Do we want to go to the temple, or do we want to go to the museum? This is a decision. This is a branching path, fellas. This is important. I'm relying on you, chat. I'm relying on you. Korea Museum. We got one vote for Korea Museum. Yep, museum, museum, museum it is. Well, I did tell Yunji I like museums, so let's 
go to the Corio Museum. I'll take you there, though I should let you know ahead of time that we haven't had much of a chance to renovate the museum. It's in pretty rough shape. If it'll make you feel any better, I can say it adds to the rustic charm. You don't need to go that far. Just make sure to keep comments about the condition of the place to a minimum. I usually find it smart to take a woman's advice when she tells me to shut up. Except when it's Yunji. Especially when it's Yunji. The way you two bicker like an old married couple already is cute. You'd make a great pair. Are you trying to hook me up with your sister? Well, maybe just a little. What about you, then? You seem to be happy with me. You don't think that maybe we'd make a good pair? I... I can't deny that we get along well together, but maybe Yunji suits you better. I can't really say. I feel like I've gotten along with... I feel like I've gotten along well with both of you so far. That is true, yes. Well, anyway, let's head to Corio Museum now. After the typical whirlwind walk with Jean guiding me hand in hand, we arrive at an area with several dilapidated wooden-like pagoda structures. This really doesn't look like a museum, more like an abandoned ancient building collection. Worse and worse. I'm sorry, I didn't quite make out what you said, Jean. I apologize, I was talking to myself about the state of this place. I had hoped that the rumours about the restoration work had been done were true, but clearly they were just rumours. I guess you're right. If these are renovated buildings, I'd hate to see the workers build new ones. Please watch what you say about the workers of Korea. Though I am angered at the lack of care for our heritage. The Song Yong Wan was the highest level facility for Confucian study during the Koryo and Choson dynasties. These buildings are the renovated ones from the early 1600s, after a fire destroyed the originals. They hosted many young men of the aristocracy, preparing them for civil service in our country. You know, I get what you're saying. This area has a rich history for your country's identity, and it saddens you to see it in such a state of disrepair. Am I correct? Yes. Unlike most people, I take pride in our long heritage and not just the modern Juche dynasty. It saddens me that this is passed off as a museum. We can't even keep many displays because the buildings are ill-suited for preserving artifacts. On the plus side, the gardens seem well maintained and there isn't any of the typical modern propaganda hanging around. I am sure what you mean by propaganda. Let's just say that back in the United States, we get pretty damn sick of seeing political science and slogans all over the place. Oh, you mean the posters of the glorious leader and the Workers' Party? No, I can't say I tire of seeing them. Though they would be out of place in this location, admittedly. Anyway, want to stroll around the gardens a bit? The buildings don't seem to offer much, but this does seem like a peaceful place. Certainly. As we stroll, a light breeze picks up and it feels refreshing. And it also whips up a few petals. Looking in the direction of the wind, many shrubs are in bloom. Zhong smiles as she walks over. This is one of my favorite parts of this stop. Very pretty flowers. They, uh... They go nicely with the pretty girl. You flatter me, but I can't help but smile. These are Mong Nan, or Seabold Magnolias, the national flower of Korea. They typically bloom in early summer and last until early fall. I'm surprised. I would have figured that the national flower would have been one named after the original leader. We do have a flower named for him. You would classify it as an orchid. There's also a begonia, na, a begonia na, named after his son. We don't have a flower for Gorius leader yet. 
I wonder what we would choose. I bite my tongue to make sure I don't say ragweed or something else that would get me killed. And corpse flower is right out. I'm not sure, but I imagine he'll get one eventually. You are right. A strong man such as our glorious leader deserves a strong flora that will make us think of him. If you say so. <laughs> I'd rather not think about glorious leader and instead stare at Zhang surrounded by magnolias for a few more minutes. Soon she turns back to me. While standing in the gardens, I see something that appears a tad out of place for having such a nice amount of, or having such a nice amount of foliage growth. Off to the side is an old tree stump, along with what appears to be a memorial plaque. I walk over and attempt to read the plaque. To make sure I get the translation right, and I call Zhang over. Hey, uh, Zhang, according to this plaque, this tree stump is some sort of memorial in opposition to American aggression against the DPRK. Yes, this is the stump from the Korean Massacre of 1976. A group of occupied Korean service corps workers under the guidance of two American officers and a regiment of UN command guards entered the nearby conflict zone. They had entered there to remove a sacred poplar tree without the consent of beloved leader. When politely asked to stop, the lead American officer shouted, Kill the bastards! and the UNC attempted to attack our forces. But our general... Victorious champion Pak Chul dispatched our men to save the day. As we were there peacefully, our soldiers were only able to use the axes the cowardly service workers dropped in their haste to save their own pathetic skin. So if your side was successful in preventing the destruction of the poplar tree, why is it just a stump here in Kaesong now? And why do you call it the Korean Massacre if you were successful? Wouldn't that indicate the UN and Americans slaughtered a bunch of Koreans? It makes no sense. While we were successful that day, the Americans used their secret weapon three days later. A large convoy of American and occupied Korean military vehicles, under the guidance of <laughs> the legendary American terrorist General Paul Bunyan, invaded the conflict zone again. General Bunyan was able to marshal all of the American Pacific forces, as well as bring in outside help from evil evil Nippon, and he completed the massacre of the poplar tree, leaving only the stump. The Americans took the rest of the tree with them. Its fate remains unknown to this day. You know, that raises more questions than answers. How so? I didn't realize you had taken up an interest in Korean military victories. Victory, right. We'll go with that. Anyway, I remember Gunning had mentioned meeting a prestigious general years ago who hurled a certain swagger stick that had been handed down a couple of times. Swagger stick? What is that? Some sort of specialized weapon? <laughs> Not really, unless a general goes for the uh, patent midnight special option in it. It's basically an accessory that looks cool and usually has some sort of background to it then this swagging stick has some sort of meaning. Yeah, Gunny had met with uh, General James Mattis at some Pentagon function years back. They got to drinking a bit, and after a while, the Mad Dog took Gunny and some other guys to see his collection of military memorabilia. Mad Dog? Term of endearment for the best damned American currently alive on the planet. You know, that's something I actually agree with. I quite like Mattis, especially when he told Trump to go fuck himself. Anyway, he showed Gunny a swagger stick made of wood, and he said it got it from the guy... Okay, who got it from the original owner, General William Livesey. So they all had a term of general... Wait, what? But basically, they said the stick was made in memorial of two officers who were ruthlessly slaughtered by the Koreans in 1976 over the trimming of the tree. That's not how it happened. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm sure all countries involved have their own side of the story. Anyway, it's probably safe to assume that stick resting in the glass case is the remains of your tree. Our sacred tree. A trophy of our greatest international enemy. Why? 
maybe I shouldn't go with the classic flippant line to the victors go to spoils here. That's not so unusual. Militaries throughout history are well known for taking back trophies of victories. It could be worse. At least we've all pretty much moved on from taking scalps. Enough depressing war talk and history lessons. This is supposed to be a comedy game. Anyway, I'm feeling kind of hungry after going through the gardens. Want to go to the Kaesong Kuksu house and share a meal? Sounds like a good idea to me. Asahi vending machines. Somehow I find that very unlikely. It's getting past mid-afternoon by the time we get to the Kaesong Kuksu house. It didn't take long to get a table, though we're not alone. The population is sparse. The fair is as, is as expected. Traditional Korean fair. And of course it comes with plenty of key... God, I can't stand this stuff anymore. I can't even say the word. Oddly enough, when the food comes out, it's plentiful. I mean, this is only a rough estimate, but my main course is probably the equivalent of a full day's worth of food for your average Korean. I wonder why they're so intent on impressing me but not feeding their own people. So how does your meal taste so far? That's amazing. It's uh, really delicious, and so much of it. Especially the kimchi. Kaesong is known for having very flavorful foods. Likely from the influence of being so near to a bunch of invaders holding half the country hostage. South Korean influence, huh? Occupied Korean influence. The Kaesong region is also the primary agricultural area of true Korea. Is that why my, real, my meal arrivals the size of the one I'd get at a Texas state house? Not really. We just want to make our guests feel at home. After all, doesn't your country put on a good impression for visiting tourists? Not really, unless they have some sort of diplomatic immunity and a hotline to their country's coffers. That's a shame. You should treat foreigners better. Well, they aren't mistreated or anything, but they certainly aren't given cute escorts. Truthfully, Zhang, why am I getting treated like someone special? I'm just a marine with a nice set of abs. You're unusually perceptive for a protagonist. I get that a lot. True Korea doesn't get many tourists. For some reason, we've been labelled as an enemy state by most of the world. And the things foreign leaders say about Glorious Leader are all lies. So the few tourists you do get, you try extra hard to leave a good impression. Then you hope they go home and try to dispel rumours regarding Korea. Precisely. Plus, you're in the military, so if you go back and spread word that Korea is a good place, maybe you'll work its way to some important people. Not sure how much stock they put in the 1171 Water Dog's opinion on international affairs. Oh, right. I've read of your naval animal units. They're quite renowned. Even we in true Korea can respect their skill. I remember you told me about being a water dog in our letters. I was enamored, I must admit. Uh, yeah, sure. That's us, the elite water dogs. Well, I guess there's one advantage of not having internet access in a country. Either way, I don't think my opinion carries much weight. That's a shame. Still, maybe your comrades will want to come after hearing how nice it is in Korea. Will they get cute girl escorts? Sadly, no. You are a special case the tourist agency overlooked, so we had to take you on as an individual. It's not normal for you to stay with us and get such attention. Guess I got lucky for once in my life. My squad mates are going to be so jealous. I'll take that as a compliment. You should. I smile at her and she blushes in return. Fellas, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And what about Yunji? Wouldn't they be jealous if you told them about her too? Of course they would. I mean, if you've seen Marines on deployment, they'd ask um, anyone as uh, friendly as Yunji for a drink. She's that beautiful? 
I was just saying that Yunji could have her pick from the entire deployment from Operation Iraqi Freedom. <sighs> what was that? It sounded like someone gasped. Oh, nothing. That was a that was um, a sneeze. Yes, Achoo! Zhong is clearly lying. What's more, she's fidgeting under the table. Oh. I hate you so much. I thought so, Yang. Are you letting Yunji eavesdrop on our conversation via your cell phone? I am, as you would say, dusted. Uh, that's busted. You Americans have so many odd sayings. Stop deflecting. You still with us, Yunji? Anyway, you're both great, okay? You're both very popular in the U.S. Our character artist is sure. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall. I love it. See when you get home, Eugene. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye, jerk. You know, that seems uncalled for. Don't mind her. It's how she shows her affection, hurting the ones she loves most. After this, Zhong hangs up and puts her phone away, and we continue our meal. I can't tell, but I think Zhong seems happy but conflicted. I don't think she wants to talk about it, though. Once we get through dessert, I pay and we head out, and the car is waiting for us. It's getting late, and the drive is pretty long. We should head back. Agreed. Yunji might worry about you if we stay out too late. Don't sell yourself short. She's more worried about you. Is that so? Yes, she's really taking a liking to you, I think. It's just she's bad at showing her feelings. And how do you feel about that? I... I'd hope you'd be interested in her, too. You seem a nice guy and well-suited to her. Sounds like someone isn't honest with herself, either. You'll gather no more intel from me right now. Prepare your lap. I require its use for a nap. Where can I get girls like this? Come on, guys. Come on. Fuck, man. Uh, go ahead. Zhong lays her head in my lap for the ride home. It's very relaxing. Coupled with the long ride, I think I might nap as well. Fuck, I hate that. All right. I'll probably need the extra sleep to deal with Miss Sundere Sunshine when we get back anyway. I can't say I dislike this, having two girls who seem genuinely interested in me. But they live in North Korea. I can't move here or else I'll be branded a traitor. I doubt either of them would be allowed to leave. Maybe, I'm not sure. It's nothing to worry about now, though. Time to rest. Third night here, second after having been out all day with one of my chaperones. Or hostesses. Girlfriends, maybe? They sure seem intent on keeping me to themselves. Are they hoping to keep me here in Korea, or are they hoping I'll sneak them out? Neither seems very likely. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Perhaps grabbing hands, calling out ink's dates, and falling asleep on foreign men is a custom here. Yeah, I'm not overthinking things. Speaking of thoughts, I think mine are about to be interrupted. Is our living room floor more comfortable than my bed? Loaded question. But I'm sure you meant it as an innocent one. Well, maybe not. Anyway, I came to see if you were busy this evening. <laughs> Seeing as the Pyongyang light life involves explaining to soldiers what I'm doing out on the street late at night, without getting killed or arrested, I'd say my agenda is pretty clear. It's not always like this. I'm sure at some point we can go somewhere in the evening. I hope so. Anyway... Did you have something in mind for this evening? Yes. 
I was hoping you could help Yunji with her English tonight. She really needs as much help as possible, and for some reason she doesn't do well learning under my guidance. I think maybe having a cute American man might help her. Not sure with... Not sure about what being cute has to do with it, but I'm glad to hear I'm not the ugly American. Hmm. Well, Yunji has taken a liking to you. She's just never been very good with her feelings. Color me fifty shades of not fucking surprised. When she was thirteen, a boy who had a crush on Yunji actually got the nerve to confess to her. She actually liked him as well. So they dated? Well, no. She didn't know how to handle the sudden confession and she ended up shooting him with a pellet gun. Pellet gun? Why the hell did she have one of those on her in the first place? I mean, do kids just carry those to class? <laughs> we prefer our students carry 9mm compacts. He confessed to her at the small arms practice range. <laughs> you sure he was in love and not depressed? It seems like a suicide attempt was, ba was made there. Don't be mean. My sister has her faults, but she can be sweet and is certainly not bereft of womanly charms. I suppose that's true. She's cute in her own way. Anyway, I would like for you to help her with her English after dinner. I'll have everything you need ready. Fair enough. I did promise to help her after all. Anyway, maybe I'll be able to finally respect her as a teacher or get some respect as her teacher. You probably shouldn't put all your hopes in one basket for that idea. Not sure how, but you mixed up two old sayings and actually made a pretty decent new one after that. Beginner's luck? Probably. Still, it was kind of cute, though. Easy there. You're supposed to be flirting with Yunji tonight. I thought I was teaching her, not flirting with her. There's a difference. A pretty clear one. Maybe one day you'll understand. Don't put all your hopes in one basket. So mean. I'll have Yunji waiting and ready after dinner for your tutoring. Alright guys, I'm going to the bathroom. One second. Hello guys, I'm back. Let's have a look. <laughs> Teaching Yunji English. This should be interesting. Of course, giving a loaded gun to a gorilla could be interesting too, but... At least he'd have a fighting chance that time. Digs out for Harambe, fellas. Better take a quick nap before marching into this battle. Thanks for the meal, Yunji. Again, you've outdone yourself. Best meal I've had in Korea yet. 
Well, of course. I have been trained in the culinary arts, so it is at least the least I can do. Think nothing of it. Look at you, getting all bashful with the American's praise. Yunji's cheeks glow red. It's pretty cute. I may have to praise her more if that's the reaction it gets. I am not. He just took me by surprise with his compliments, that is all. You are such a terrible liar. Can I ask you for a favor, Juan Posadas? She winks, obviously. Of course, you've been such gracious hostesses. What can I do for you? Can you clean up the table and wash the dishes tonight while I prepare Yunji for your event this evening? I'd hardly call what we're doing an event, but sure, I'd be glad to clean up. What is going on? What do you have? What do you think you're preparing me for? You're going to spend some one-on-one -on -one time alone in your bedroom with our guest. Bliet! What? I am not ready for that sort of thing. That's way too sudden and you're setting it up, Jean. Here's the part of the misunderstanding where you say, but if it's sex with Juan Posadas, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> God damn it. Right, if it's sex with Juan Posadas, I would. Hey, stop tricking me. Suck up yet. Now it's about the perfect time for you to fulfill another Cinderella trope. Hold on, I said that wrong. Who is running this operation here? I think Zhang is. Anyway, dirty as your minds might be, that's not even close to what we're doing. You are thinking of something perverted right now, aren't you? I'm under assault from both sides now. Admit it, hentai, pervert, bleat. If I don't admit, you must acquit. Okay, no way am I spending any time alone in my bedroom with this creep. It will be fine, Yunji. I think you've had more martial arts training than him anyway. How do you know I don't have a part-time job as a dojo floor sweeper? Where the Sifu adopted me as his only child and taught me the ways of the Taekwon Leap. Because you live in America, home of slackers who bum on the beach when not sleeping. Everyone knows Americans are fat, lazy bums. Fortunately, I am not. Anyway, I'm going to help you learn English tonight. <laughs> Here, teach me English. But, no buts about it. I'll meet you in your room in five minutes. Sister, you must learn English to advance in the People's Army, and our guest is going to help you. I'd rather have the sex. At least it will be over in two minutes. English takes forever. <laughs> oh, God damn. God damn, son. That was fucking harsh. I think I can last a little longer than two minutes. Both of you hush and go to Yunji's room and leave the door open. I swear if I hear you complaining, Yunji, you're doing strip English lessons. If you had told me that was on the table, I'd have offered my services sooner. Ugh. Let's just get this over with. With that, she forcefully grabs my hand and drags me to her bedroom. She also defiantly slams the door shut and locks it behind her. Honestly, my sister can be such an instigator. Just to make sure, we are practicing English and not having sex, right? Yes, we are just studying English, and here is the book we work from. She had she hands me a bright yellow paperback book. On the front, the title reads How to Sound Like a Dumb American. Well, that's a good sign. Let's check the copyright date. 
Great, it's only three 1987. Great, it's only three decades out of date, so I guess that's progress. I sit next to her on the bed and flip open the bookmark page. How about reading this sentence for a start? Hello, everybody. We should go to the dish talk to dance together. That image is almost as awkward as Yonji's pronunciation. <sighs> I'm not even certain where to begin. I'd like to blame it on the book, but your pronunciation is atrocious. English is so hard, Blian. Why do I need to learn it anyway? I am not sure. Zhang said you needed it to advance in your military. But I don't want to advance to that position. What position is that? That information is classified and I am not able to share it with you. Great. Well, don't worry about my paranoia. And concentrate on making an S sound that sounds like a snake. Instead of shh. Evil bastard Ronald Reagan destroyed Wimpy Warfare Mundial in the election. Uh oh. Look closer at that last word. That's not an R, but an L. You mean in erection? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, but yes. The word is election, not erection. They're two completely different things. What are they then? An election is when the population of a place votes for its political leaders. And we do that. Oh, Brian, we do that. The DPRK holds elections? Da! We elect our representatives to the Supreme People's Assembly. Honestly, I did not expect that. How does that even work here? Well, the Supreme People's Assembly has 687 seats, and everyone over 17 can vote. That's pretty impressive. Who runs the elections? Every person who wants to run has to apply to the Democratic Front for the Reunification of the Fatherland. And they can approve or deny their application to be on the ballot. Then people get to go to an election place to vote. For the one candidate, the Democratic Front has selected to run for office that year. If you do not want to vote for them, you can go to a special booth with windows where you can cross out their name. Somehow that's about how I expected it to work. What party is in power now? The Workers' Party has 607 seats. And they're in alliance with the Social Democrats, who have 50 seats. So of the 687 seats, 657 of those are held by one party, essentially. At least you probably don't have so many political ads on TV. Anyway, you never answered my question. What is an erection? Uh, why don't you ask your sister or something? You said you would teach me English. Tell me. I really don't think I should. Tell me no. No way. It's uh it's like something people have sometimes. Uh you were can't get one. Why not? It just doesn't work that way. Let's just focus on speaking English for now. No, I want a reaction tour. Two, are you being a bad influence, Juan Posadas? No, you can't have one. Wait, Jong, were you spying on us? Absolutely, you two are a riot. 
If you have enough time to listen to none on this, you should have enough time to help me train her in English. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Considering Yunji needs all the help she can get, yes, I would. No, really, it's okay. Let's just stop and go to bed. Nope. Not going there. Read the next sentence. There is only one true career, and we must crush the occupanish. I don't think any American would say such a thing. Aurelia, there is cooler than the one, but that it. I am going to speak like that as a Jamaican man, you know, because it sounds much better. Because I am not going to do the racist Asian accent, bruv. Because if I do that, I am definitely going to get cancelled. Worse and worse, and I'm not even sure how to begin correcting you. That's what her teacher said. Her last teacher. He didn't last long. I think you really need a speech therapist as well as intensive training in remedial English before tackling this book of absurdities. Remedial? This book is the remedial English book for Korea. The normal English book is much harder. Maybe instead of a book with complete sentences, you should have started with phonics or maybe something more basic. Maybe instead of a book with complete sentences, okay. You don't happen to have any of those uh, learning letter readers would, around, would you? I do not know what they saw. They're like these uh, cute people made out of letters, and they usually have things that start with their letter. Like Mr. A would have an apple and an alligator, or Mrs. J would have juice and a jam. I think we had something like that. They were what you would call flashing cards. Let me look in my closet. Yunji goes to her closet, kneels down, and starts rummaging through. She also starts tossing things out behind her into the room, which is when I finally realize it's a huge mess. She has things scattered all over the place. Various plants and charts are covered by food wrappers. Her pellet guns are haphazardly thrown about the room as well. And her clothes, her uniform is on a chair, socks hung all over the place. And I think that's a pair of her panties hanging from the lampshade. I nudge Jong and point in that direction. I'm pretty sure that's a fire hazard over there. <sighs> Sweet Yunji, you're such a slob. I just cleaned this room. That looks like an American HVA rocket hit it, and you've got your dirty underwear hanging from a lamp. And like a scared cat, Yunji yelps and beelines it for the lamp, snatching her underwear. Young, why are you pointing out my, my, <laughs> my unmentionables to him? Actually, he pointed them out to me. How could you? How could I what? How could you just casually point out my, my, uh, your panties? It just rolls off your tongue, doesn't it? Aren't you embarrassed to say that word? Or to see a pair of them out in the open? Have you no shame? Just about everyone wears underwear or panties. I think the British call them pants. Which causes some confusion with us Americans. But it is a dirty word. No, it's not. Sure, some people feel uncomfortable saying it, but it's not a curse word or anything. I... I told you so, sister. I do not believe you both. Neither of you have any shame at all. Because of our ability to say the word panties? Look, well, yeah. Stop that. Stop what? Saying panties? Yes. Cut that out. Or what? Panties, 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 panties. Pink panties, purple panties, striped across your butt panties. We all love panties. And Jung says, I am a child. Actually, children love saying words they think are dirty, even if they aren't. You should really try it out. Never. And there is nothing that you can do to make me. 
tell you what, if you can say panties in English cleanly just once, we'll stop the lesson for the night. I do not think so. Where's the book? It's gone. While you were arguing, a snipe came and took it. Snipe hunt. Oh, no. I am not falling for that again. Jung hid it somewhere. Yes, and you can have it back if you say panties in English cleanly. You're supposed to be the sweet one. Only to Juan Posadas. I still get to be your teasing older sister to you. This is so not fair. A wise man once said life isn't fair. There are no wise men, but indulging. Who said it? Some wise guy? Who knows? The point is, life ain't fair. And if you want the lesson to end and your book back, you just have to sing panties in English once. Cleanly. Pientish. I'm sorry, I couldn't make that out. What was that? Pantish. You'll need to be louder than that. Pantish, pantish, pantish. Can I go on now? Nope, sorry, you still haven't said it yet. I just said it six times, but not cleanly. Your S at the end came out as a shush. I'm afraid he's right, sister. You'll need to try harder. I hate you both. You will both die in Gulag. No, you don't. Oh, come on, you can do it. Yunji takes a deep breath and slowly speaks. Pientis. You made E.T. proud, but you did it. Who is this E.T. and why would he be proud? Space alien, long neck, big eyes, likes to eat peanut butter candies, terrible English. Sounds like you, Yunji. Shut up and give me my book back, capitalist pig. Look under the pile of clothes over there. You buried it looking for the flashcards. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Did you find them? Yes, but the lesson is over, so... <clears throat> yes, but the lesson is over, so we do not need them. Can I see them anyway? She pulls them out of her pocket and throws them at my forehead. Naturally, I catch the box of cards. Knock yourself out before I do. I'm sleeping with one eye open tonight. Be nice, sister. Anyway, let's take a look at these flashcards. I pull out the cards. They're cheaply made and fairly worn, but the pictures are accessible. Looks like they were put back in the box in alphabetical order. Mr. A is flying an airplane. Mr. B is holding a bomb. Mr. S Miss C has chemical weapons, and Mr. D has a dagger. These cards are fairly violent. Flamethrower, grenade, judo, machete, shotgun. Most of these cards have to let a person holding a weapon or fighting. Man, what kind of fucked up deck, deck of flashcard letters is this? Call me crazy, but I don't think the International Parenthood Association approved the printing of these. Is that the United States after a nuking on the U card? Whoopsie, yeah. forgot about that one. No wonder we were told not to show these to outsiders. Yes, it's been so long I'd forgotten as well. You guys like to really indoctrinate your kids to hate us young, don't you? It's honestly not like that. Not anymore. Not really. The printing company mysteriously went out of business years after issuing these. No one has stepped in to print new ones, so we must use what we have. Oh, okay. Silence ensues, and not comfortably. It takes a good ten minutes before I break it. I think I'm going to hit the sack. Yes, it is pretty late. I shall hit my sack. <laughs> Let's uh, work on your idiom sometime. Think of where you want to go tomorrow, and I will see you in the morning. Sleep well, everybody. I hear them bickering softly as I leave, but I'm too exhausted to strain myself to listen. 
night was really, really weird. Scary weird. The girls seem nice, but from the past few days, I get the real sense that I'm not really welcome in this country. I really need to stay on my toes and get through this trip and just get home. I'm really getting sick of that alarm. Seriously, the music violates the Geneva Convention in some way. It's been a bit since I've done my morning exercises. Maybe I'd better do those. Make sure I don't get rusty over here. I can't go outside and run, at least not without one of the ladies, and I don't want to wake them up, as I don't hear them moving yet. Guess I'll do some push-ups and sit-ups and stuff for a while. <sighs> not bad for not taking a few days off. I think sometime during my workout, I heard the girls get up and start doing their routines as well. I should probably take this time to get a shower before Jean gets in there. Not that the view wasn't pleasant yesterday. But I get I get the feeling too many unplanned encounters of the disrobed variety might make, get me in some hot water. And not the literal sense of a shower. Another good reason to work up an early morning sweat is the shower. I'll be the first to admit that our bases aren't exactly perfect when it comes to getting hot water through the pipes or the showers. But at least it eventually gets there. Not here. I could crank the hot faucet all the way to star cash coffee levels and still get hit by some Arctic level water. First time I tried to shower here, I waited and waited and then finally forced myself into the glacier falls. I'm glad none of the girls have wandered in on me at least. Explaining shrinkage is the last thing I want to do here in North Korea. Okay, the last thing next to dying by glorious leader's decree. Okay, that's as clean as I'm going to get. Time to toss on my silkies and see what we're doing today. Hope Yunji cooked up something good. I'm a tad hungry here. <sighs> Damn it, I also feel really guilty complaining about being hungry in a land that appears to be in a state of perpetual starvation. If this leader is so glorious, then how come he's got a land of scared, hungry people following it? Man... I think I'm between that area of having a lot to learn and possibly knowing too much. And neither seem to be a safe state of mind for this country. Anyway, someone's moving around in the kitchen area, so it's time to go look. Good morning, Juan Posadas. I hope you're well today. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. Exercised some, got cleaned up. Thought I'd go see what was cooking in here, and I'm starting to like this whole kimchi thing. A little white lie. I'm getting sick of kimchi with every meal. Nice to see you're finally admitting it. Of course I already knew, but it's still a pleasure to hear it from your voice. Was it that obvious? You ate three bowls last night, I'd say it was. Well, Gunny says I'm a growing boy. Then he makes me run. Guess it's the girth. That's what they say about Americans. What? Oh, never mind. Just talking to myself. Well, anyway, what's Yunji got cooking for us? Speaking of which, where is she? I believe she was looking for something in her room, but she was having a hard time finding it. Maybe you should go help her out. Are you sure that's a good idea? She might not want me snooping around in her room. It's not snooping if she's there. Go ahead and help her. I'll get the table set. The quicker you help her find what she's looking for, the quicker you get to eat. Well, okay, I guess. We go back to the hall where the rooms are, though it's not that long of a walk. How to go about this? Zhong mentioned you needed assistance. Need some help there, Yonji. Cup check, kick. Mm, maybe not that last one. As I get to the door, I close my eyes and sigh. Dealing with Yonji can be mentally taxing. I slowly step in and open my eyes and instantly choke on the words I had so carefully prepared in my head. Oh, damn. Even Michael Angelo couldn't have sculpted such a beautiful... Oh, wait. It's Yunji. Oh, God, no, it's Yunji. In a compromising situation. She'll kill me. 
Wait, I don't think she's noticed me yet. Which is good. Because I don't think I'd live to enjoy replaying this scene in my head if I knew if she knew I was here. Better back out slowly. Good, good. I'm almost at the door. I may just live to tell my grandchildren about this day. Glad to see you and Juan Posadas are finally getting along, Yunji. Chong, are you kidding me? Oh god, gear goes. Any chance of my having children? I am not sure who to kill first. The perverted peeping Tim or the loudmouthed older sister. But then killing him seems too kind. It's not like that. <laughs> Yunji, I didn't know. I am going to. Yunji, I swear I wasn't peeping. Yes, you were. Ah, uh, Xiong, you got me into this. You're both dead. It was just a second. I didn't see much. He was totally staring. Like, for minutes. I'm getting attacked from both sides here. Let's all calm down and act rational here. Just admit you were comparing her ass to Renaissance sculptures already. How the hell did you know that? I'll kill you. Uh, and I just got knocked out. Could have warned me. Ah. Uh, be quiet and pass me the gauze. Here. So, where the hell did Yunji learn to kick like that? Any ow. What? Did you think I wouldn't sanitize it first? And all loyal Koreans are instructed in the martial arts during our school education. You should be glad that I did not go for a law kick. My grandkids will thank you for that one day. I'll need to change again, though. I got blood on my shirt. Well, it's not like you didn't deserve it. Oh, Yunji, there's so little you know about boys. This is why you didn't get asked to the May Day festivities. I'm going to have to side with Zhang on this one. Fine. How would you like it if I watched you get changed, then? Honestly, it wouldn't bother me. I think enough men have seen my junk since I joined the Marine Corps to last a couple lifetimes. And what about women? I'm not walking into that trap. I like to avoid getting another kick to the face. At least he learns. Really? Just wait for tomorrow's CG. What? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to go take shower now, so stay out. Oh, I almost forgot. Could you go get the anti-swelling medicine from Yunji? Nope. No way. Uh-uh. Probably a good idea. It didn't fit in the budget anyway. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? Ancient Korean secret. Anyway, let's go prepare the table for breakfast. Breakfast is over, and we even managed to get through it without Yunji attacking anyone. It's really good they keep the weapons locked up. God forbid I walk in on Yunji field stripping her rifle or something. After cleaning up, Zhong presents the familiar map to me again. So which date are you picking today? Wait. Why is Yunji's bedroom written on here and then crossed off? Sister's idea of joke was to list my bedroom as a date route after the incident this morning. However, this is not an erge. I crossed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying if this was an Aragay, you wouldn't have crossed it out? Just pick a date already. Can do. All right. Well, I suppose a trip to Korea wouldn't be complete without checking out Mansu Day. Yes, it's one of our most heavily visited tourist destinations. As such, only the top guides may take you. So I'll be spending the day with... Yoonji will be accompanying you on this trip. She is, I will. 
No, I'm just pulling your arm, comrade. I'll be your guide. Leg. The expression is pulling your leg. <laughs> Do not scare me like that. You know I'm on probation from escorting tourists at Mensude. Probation. Now that sounds like an interesting story. And it's one you're and it's one you're not going to hear. Figured you wouldn't tell me. Guess I'll just have to coax it out of Yong instead. Good luck. She pinky swore to complete secrecy. If you buy me lunch on our date today, I'll tell you. Deal. You capitalist swine Benedict Garfield. And here we see how you ended up failing Diplomacy 101 this semester. She's not doing too well in her American generals either. You stay out of this. I don't see what the big deal is, Yunji. You were completely justified in what you did. But they still made an example out of the whole situation. Punishing me over punishing the tourists. That hurt. Wow. Sounds serious. What in the world happened? I'll tell you on the way there. I was escorting a Russian tourist who used his phone to take pictures of the statues of our most revered leaders. I didn't realize until the end of the tour when he showed me. I was bowing in respect of Nefote. That doesn't sound too bad. Not only did he get a shot of my t skirt tucked into my unmentionables. He also didn't get the entirety of both statues in the shot. The nerve. I swiped his phone and stomped on it. And they gave me probation. Now you don't have to buy young lunch, so near. You really are such a child at times, Yunji. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. I'm sure there are other Yunji stories you can swap me for lunch. I hate you both. Just go already. Go on your date. Have fun. I'll be here with my pity celebration. I don't be that way, Yunchi. When we get back, I'll help you with your English if you're done with your pity party by then. My English is fine. I'm going to my room. Yunji crosses her arms in anger as she tries to storm out. I'm sorry, Yunji. I'll miss you today. I see you every day, so I probably won't. I thought you were I thought you were the sweet one. What's with all the gems today? Military secret, you'll understand next year. But of your part of your training involves teasing your sister. Teasing friends in general is the best way to gain people's confidence so you can manipulate them into giving up state secrets. Well that and womanly charms. But enough about work, let's get ready. I'm beginning to feel extremely uncomfortable. Then you should change into your comfortable clothes. It's going to be warm today. Meanwhile, you'll be dressed in full uniform, making me feel even more out of place. Yes, that is the rule for tour guides. Be in full dress whenever you're on duty. I brought my Marine Corps Moto t-shirt. I could wear that. You're good if you like running from the local authorities all day. I know, I know. Low profile. I wonder what you'd look like in one of our uniforms. The outfit for men is a little plain, which would go perfect with your personnel. <laughs> oh, shit. And here I thought I had won you over with my sharp whip and winning smile. Don't let her fool you. She's totally smitten with you. Is that a fact? Wait, what? Hold on. It's not like I... Jung is the one always writing about you in her diary. How sweet you are, how cute you are, and how she wants to... In a flash, Yunji, Jung has Yunji in a headlock and is dragging her back to the bedroom. Yunji is wailing the whole way. After a few short moments, Jung is back in the living room with her slightly too friendly smile. At this rate, we'll be here all day. Follow me. You can get changed into your outdoor clothes so that we can go. I know where the bedroom is. You don't have to lead me everywhere. What? 
Unless you plan on changing me too. A tempting offer, but not while Yunji is around. She might get angry. I don't see why. It doesn't seem like she's taken that great an interest in me. Most of the time, she just insults me. <sighs> I see the rumors about American men being clueless about women holds true. Anyway, get ready. The trolley bus will be here soon. She leaves to go get ready herself. Well, nothing to left to do but to get dressed. I'm not sure what's up with these two. It, it seems more and more like they're competing over me. Here I thought I was just going to be touring with some military buds, and now I've got two girls fighting over me to see who gets to go out with me. Well, it could be worse. It's not like I was the most, the most in demand guy back home. Goddamn boot lieutenants with all their bling. <laughs> I remember that one stupid second lieutenant, second lieutenant we had in Hawaii. That dude was an idiot, and yet he kept getting award after award. We used to call him the bling Fuhrer behind his back. <laughs> Good times. Anyway, this vacation would be much better if I weren't constantly being spied on by those two. Still, they're both pretty damned cute. After tossing on a pair of jeans and a plain t-shirt, I grab my wallet and phone and step out. As expected, Zhong is in full dress uniform. Yunji is nowhere to be found. I guess Yunji didn't want to see us off then. She's a little busy in her room, blowing off some steam. Anyway, the trolley bus will be here in a minute, so let's wait outside. Jong doesn't even wait for my reply as she grabs my hand and leads me at the door. And as she said, the trolley bus is just about to pull up to the door. I wonder how she managed to get the tram to give her service at her door. She pulls me up and leads us all the way to the back. No one else is aboard yet. I apologize. Our regular driver is out sick today, so we be on this tram today. It may take a little longer than usual to arrive, though. That's okay. We can just check out the view then. Looking at the trolley bus, I can see why it'll take longer. This clunker has been around since the 1970s, and from the looks of it, the bus was made in some Soviet bloc country. I think some of the equipment making up the trolley bus are in Czech, maybe Hungarian. Well, whatever country produced it, by all rights, it should be rusting in a scrapyard back there. Instead, it appears to be part of the Korean mass transit system. As it moves, I can hear the engine creak and grumble under the weight of 50 years of abuse. Seriously, I think I saw a guy on a bicycle pass us, and he was pretty chubby. You know, that's the first fat person I've seen in the entire country. Well, except the big man himself. My thoughts are interrupted as I feel something lightly fall on my shoulder. It appears Zhong, tired from fighting with Yunji, has, liber has liberally made use of my shoulder as a pillow. Not that I mind. I could get used to this. Zhong asleep on my shoulder. The looks I'm getting from some of the other people on the bus who have filtered onto this bus over the last hour are winning me out, though. You know, the really terrifying thing is, everyone here looks terrified of me, all like they want to kill me. Yunji falls into the latter category, and Zhong, well, I guess she doesn't fall into either. Oh, great. Sounds like the brakes are almost shot on this death trap, too. Add that to the list of things wrong with this country. What was that line? We live, we die, we die again. Yeah, that sums this up. The walls shake at the slightest bump. The seat belts are ripped out. Most of the windows are sealed shut. And I'm pretty sure there's a spring from the seat making its way up my ass. We'd be safer and more comfortable in that car we've been taking everywhere. I'll never bitch about the noise from our tanks ever again, or being shot at while in one. At least it takes more than a gust of wind to take out our tanks. This death-defying ride is making another tour of Afghanistan sound downright cozy. The brakes must have startled Zhong as she's lifting her head slightly. Are we there yet? 
No, we aren't dead yet, nor are we at our destination. Our ride through purgatory will continue. She nods and puts her head back down. I rest my head lightly on her shoulder. That feels nice. I'd say it was worth it, except all the locals getting on the bus look really astonished, seeing a foreign white dude with his arm around a sleeping member of the Korean military. However, they don't say anything, so I guess maybe it was worth it. After another harrowing hour, which felt more like 20 hours, we finally arrive at our destination and get off the bus. This is the Pyeongshan district, home of the Mansudai Art Studio. It is here where all our vital works of art are created, and it is one of the largest centers of art production in the world. That sounds like the first actual fact I've heard since I've got to this country. This place is huge and so many people everywhere. With all of the outdoor and indoor sections combined, this is easily the largest art studio I've ever seen. It's impressive, isn't it? So many wonderful pieces of art have come from here. But let's not just stand here and talk about it. Let me show you around. She grabs my hand and leads me to a large outside monument. By the looks of it, I'm starting to question if I'm in Korea or the former Soviet Union. So yeah, hammer and sickle. Those are definitely old school communism symbols. But why the paintbrush? It's a calligraphy brush. It symbolizes the intellectuals in union with the workers and farmers. And the red buildings and the red buildings flanking the monument. They're meant to resemble flags. The words atop say ever victorious. But why the communist symbols? While our country has moved on from traditional Marxist communism into Juche, it is still a strong foundation of how our country came to be founded. Also, the circular foundation is 70 meters in diameter to symbolize the 70 years of the party and down with imperialism union when the monument was completed. Down with imperialism? Yes. Remember before the lineage of the glorious leader finally wrested control of our country, we had been annexed into the traitorous Western Japanese Empire that ended after Japan's crushing defeat at the United States' hands in the Second World War. So, in essence, this part of the monument is in celebration of no, no Nippon. That may be the worst pun I've ever heard. You've never met my drill sergeant. There are more monuments and other pieces to see. However, some of them may not leave you with a very good feeling. After all, the history between our two countries is... strained. I thought Korea and the United States were friendly with each other. Not with true Korea, no. You are on good terms with the occupied part of the country. Up here, not so much. Some of the art may disturb you. I've seen children with explosives strapped to them used as IEDs. I think I can handle some anti-American artwork. First, that's horrible. Who would use an innocent child as a disposable weapon? Far better to train them with rifles and have them kill waves of foreign invaders like with the Great War. Second, don't say I didn't warn you. Well, I'm glad to see that there are still people shocked by kids being used as makeshift bombs. Wait, that's not much better. Man, this is dark. Does anyone realize? Does anyone think that this got a bit dark right quick? This is why we drink, people. Kids don't make good riflemen anyway. The guns are too heavy. Better to have them operate crew serve weapons so they can carry it as a group, which helps build essential teamwork skills. That That's an excellent point. I'll have to pass that idea on up. That was a... You know what? It's not worth arguing. Let's just go inside. Zhong nods and leads me by the hand into the main section of the art studio. All around us are different kinds of artwork. Paintings, drawings, embroideries, and even woodcuttings. 
Honestly, they aren't ba that bad, and I'm surprised by the quality. The themes are mostly of nature and the ever-present Workers' Party. Though I notice a painter in one area working on something completely outside of those boundaries. Before I can head over, Zhong tugs on my sleeve. I have to use the facilities. Could you wait for me here? Facilities? Are you going to paint something? No, I mean, I, make to ha I mean, I have to take a stop at the restroom. Oh, you need to hit the head. Sure thing. Got it. I'll stay here. Hit the head. You haven't done anything to warrant that punishment yet. Sorry. Military jargon for go to the bathroom. <laughs> Interesting. I may have to teach that to one to Yunji. She might scare some soldiers with that expression. Anyway, I'll try not to take too long. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. As she heads off, I walk over to the painter I'd spotted a few minutes ago. He's painting a picture of what can only be described as war crimes being committed. However, it's a group of American soldiers torturing and killing Koreans. At the center is Marine Corps General James Mad Dog Mattis <coughs> using a baseball bat to bash in the head of a Korean woman. Which has some historical issues beyond the content itself, but either way, I try to stay quiet, but I accidentally sneeze, drawing the attention of the artist. His face goes ghost white when he turns around and sees me. Stay quiet and let him speak first. This guy is seriously infected with a case of oh shit, an American is here to kill me syndrome. Maybe I'd best just stay quiet, smile, and keep my arms to the side as to not agitate him anymore. There. See, dude? I come in peace. Security! Security help! <clears throat> and it appears he went for the shoot to kill as security guards come rushing towards us. Wait. How did he know I'm not American? I'm an American and not British or Icelandic or something. <sighs> Damn it, I have no choice but to stand here as two armed guards rush right up to me. Hands up, American pig dog. No sudden movements either. I slowly raise my hands behind my head and walk towards the guards as instructed. The first guard continues to hold his rifle at me while motioning to the other guard to frisk me. <laughs> I'm tempted to make a joke about copping a feel on the first date, but I seriously don't think those make for very good last words. The guard quickly pats me down and relieves me of the meager possessions I have from my pocket, and then heads back to the first guard. Not much on him, sir. Just a wallet with mostly American money, a tin of breath mints, and a really crappy flip phone even my mother would be embarrassed to use. In other words, a damn tourist. This is the fifth time he's freaked over a tourist this month. Han Ji Won, we told you to stop freaking out over every American who comes near you. The artist, Han Ji Won, turns back to his easel sheepishly without noting another word to me. Unfortunately, the guards have more to say. I just wish they'd lower their weapons while doing so. Okay, Yankee Doodle. I should do a voice for these guys. <clears throat> what do you reckon, boys? They're cops. Um, the security guards. What do you reckon? Um, how about a uh, Australian Italian, um, uh, uh, an Italian Australian? Even though it's technically a, a racial slur, it's been d. Slurified, I know that's a word. Um, but I can do West Melbourne. Okay, Yankee Doodle. Where's your tour guide, bro? You know the rules. No wandering off from the guides. I'm sorry, my tour guide needed to go to the bathroom. Had to hit the head, did he? Oh, so you guys use that phrase too. Oh, and my guide is a she. No way they assigned, no way they assigned a female guard to an American. No joking. 
You've got a loaded weapon aimed at my head. I'm all for jokes, but I usually prefer them not to end my death as the punchline. I'm telling the truth. My tour guide is a female. Her name is Zhang. Tell you what, bro. We'll just wait here for the Zhang to show up. It takes another ten minutes, but Zhang finally arrives on the scene. It's like she didn't even notice the heavily armed men casually hanging out with me. I mean, she walks right up to me and grabs my hand like she's been doing the whole trip. All freshened up. Ready to go now? You may want to check over with Hans and Franz over here so they don't pump me with lead as we walk away. Zhong finally notices the two guards who appear to be a bit in, who appear to be bit in shock that I was telling the truth. Or that Zhong is pretty damned cute. Maybe it's a bit of both. Whatever. I apologize, gentlemen. I had to hit them on the head, as it and as it would be improper to bring my guest with me, I had him wait here. He didn't cause any trouble, did he? Not really, man. He freaked out Hanji one, but that's nothing new or worth filling the paperwork over. Here's your, here's your stuff back, and seriously, you need to upgrade your phone, bro. You're telling me. The two guards leave us and head back to their posts, leaving me with Zhong and a lack of a loaded gun pointed at me. I'm sorry about that. Some of the artists here are a little more paranoid than others. Well, yeah, if I was painting something depicting a Korean brutally killing Americans and you walked up behind me, I'd probably freak out too. Oh yes, that piece will eventually be moved to a different museum. Let's go look at the other pieces instead. We head around the spacious art complex, gazing at various pieces, mostly in silence. Not exactly a comfortable silence after what just happened, but it's not unpleasant either. Eventually, the lull in conversation is broken by Zhong's soft voice. I'm sorry you had to see that painting. That's no big deal, Zhang. Everyone has their version of history. I suppose. I, I just... It must be hard learning that your country has committed unspeakable crimes against innocents. I can't deny that we haven't been perfect, but I'm pretty sure the mad dog has never bashed anyone's head in with a baseball bat. Well, at least not in Korea. I must admit, I'm feeling a tad confused. I'm supposed to hate you. I've been told Americans are nothing but lo murderers and looters. Yet you seem different. Governments have a lot of power to sway the minds of their people into believing something. It's not until you actually meet individuals that you realize we're all pretty much the same and in the end. Even the British... That does make sense. I mean, I've given tours to different Americans the past couple of years. None of them seemed the type to slaughter anyone. They all had their quirks, but overall they seemed nice enough. Don't worry about it too much. We're all just people in the end. It's getting kind of late in the afternoon, though. You ready to get lunch? Yes, I'd like that. Looks like we're making prom... Oh, boys, check out this defac. Fuck yeah. Since the trolley bus won't be back for a while, we end up eating at the complex's cafeteria. This might be the most meager meal I've had since coming here, and the worst kimchi. Zhong and I sit in the corner away from the others, lest another guy panics at my lack of career dis. There's more art to see, and we should probably end the tour with the grand monuments outside before smacking the trolley bus. It's uh, hitting the bus. But anyway, isn't that where Yunji had her international incident? Yes, at the statues of our beloved leaders who transcended to watch over us from the stars. That's rather a beautiful way of describing the death of someone. Death? <laughs> oh, goodness, no. Gods don't die. They transcend when it's time and leave their progeny in charge. You think the former leaders are gods? Not at all. They're not former leaders. They just guide us in a transcendent state. 
Right. So how about this kimchi? Yunji's is way better, am I right? Zhong appears lost in reverent thought about the dead leaders, and maybe that's for the best. The relative silence is interrupted as a bowl clangs to the ground. Looking over, I see a middle-aged lady who has unfortunately dropped her kimchi. The poor woman appears to be on the verge of tears as she uses her own shirt to mop up the mess. Couldn't they get her a mop or something? No, the rule for wasting food is one must clean it up with their own cloth. Will they give her at least another bowl of food? Seriously, I can see her ribs through their shirt. No, each person is only allowed one bowl and she'll have to wait until she goes home to eat. That doesn't seem fair. Even the drill instructors weren't that cruel in boot camp. It seems sad, but she was given according to her needs. To give her more would be to deny someone else's. Can you wait for just one second? I have to do something. Need to split the head. That's a uh, hit the head. And no, it'll just need to do something. It'll only take a minute. Okay, but please don't leave the mess hall. I won't. People are staring at me. I slowly walk over to the woman who has spilled her food. She's sitting alone and crying softly and waiting at the end of her scheduled break. She doesn't hear me approach, but I'm pretty sure I feel all the other eyes on me. When I finally get to her, I place my bowl in front of her. I try to speak my best to speak formal Korean. You look hungry. Here, please have this kimchi. She looks up at me with a confused expression and then looks down to see the bowl in front of her. She doesn't move to get it. It's okay, I'm not hungry, so you enjoy. She still seems confused but slowly moves her hand to the bowl. I nod to reassure her that it's okay to eat it. When she finally has it in her hands and realizes I'm not going to steal it or knock it over or slap her, she softly mumbles to me, Thank you. I then sit back to look down, I then head back to sit down with Zhong again, and she has a baffled look on her face. Why did you do that? Now you'll have no lunch and won't be able to eat until we get home. You're absolutely right. Do you want to walk around the rest of the day on an empty stomach? You couldn't be more right if you tried. I'm telling you that you'll be hungry until we get home. Doesn't that bother you? Yet again, you are correct. Are you even listening? You just keep agreeing with me, even when I'm asking a question. <laughs> oh, damn, guys. This, this is getting really dark. And, like... I don't know, man. This is supposed to be a funny game. Jesus. Dad always told me to avoid an argument with a woman. Just keep telling her she's right, and it seemed to work for him. Well, I can't say he's wrong, but now is not the time. I'll be fine. I need to lose some weight anyway. Liar. I can see your abs on the cameras when you change. You have cameras? That's not the point. I'm going to ignore that for now. Anyway, she needs the food more than I do. This place is taking this place is taking starving artists to a dangerous new level. I guess I don't quite understand, but it seems like you did a very nice thing. I'd share my kimchi with you, but I ate it already. That's fine. Let's go see those statues. She nods, stands up again, and takes me by the hand to head back into the main art exhibit areas. She's really not shy about holding hands. Not that I'm complaining. But I will complain about the odd looks I keep getting from the workers. I get the feeling they see me holding hands with Zhong, and they're somewhere between angry and confused. As we go back to the artist's work area, I see my old friend, the guy who freaked out when I watched him paint. And now the American soldier in the paint... Oh, what the hell? That, ba that bastard painted my face on him. I'll get him, that little shit. 
Are you feeling okay? Who? Me? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. Why do you ask? You spaced out there for a bit. Sorry, I just got lost in thought. We have a little more time before the trolley bus comes to take us home. Shall we go to the statues now? Sure thing. Just do me a favor and don't go full Yunji on me and bow while I'm trying to take a picture. Silly boy. Only Yunji does that. Always in a rush and she never checks. It was bound to happen someday. Too bad she destroyed the evidence. Yeah, that would have made an awesome CG shot. A what now? Nothing, let's go. Zhong leads me back outside and we travel pa the path to Mansude Hill, home of many large monuments to Korea and the Workers' Party. Jung takes us to the large statues of the first two leaders of Korea. She bows to them and then turns to talk to me. These are the statues of the two great leaders, the original leader and his son who followed him after his transcendence. They stand at 22 meters tall and are made of bronze. Original leader on the left was erected first while he was still leading us on the ground. He was covered in gold leaf in the original statue but was later altered to bronze. Yeah, those are some really tall statues. I should get a picture to show everyone back home. I whip out my hopelessly outdated flip phone and try to work the camera as best as I can. As soon as I take a shot, Zhong is peering over my shoulder at the result. I oh, know, I'm sorry, that won't do. You'll need to delete that and take it again. What? Why? It's a pretty good shot for this shoddy phone. And you aren't even in the photo, so there are no wardrobe malfunctions. I don't think you understood why Yunji was so angry in her story. Well, I'm sure she was embarrassed a little at her unmentionables on film. She was more upset that the Russian tourists hadn't gotten all of both statues in the shot. Wait, so because I don't have their legs in all the shot, I have to retake it? Yes, and I cannot look the other way on this. Please delete and try again. Fine, here goes nothing. I delete the photo and try to frame both of them in the, on the tiny screen. No good. But I have to keep moving back, but the further back I go, the smaller the picture. After about five bad takes, I finally get a shot that fits the frame. Very good. That photo is acceptable. Sure. Too bad I can't tell they're actually statues anymore. It's almost time for the trolley bus to get here, so let's head over to the stop. Sounds good to me. She takes me by the hand and leads me back. Once at the stop, it's only a short five minute wait for the trolley bus. It's the same one from this morning, much to my chagrin. It appears our seat from this morning is already taken, thankfully. Maybe I can get a seat that doesn't offer a free spring colonoscopy this time. We sit down and the trolley of death begins heading home. I hope you had a good time today. Monsude isn't always an easy tour for Americans. It was okay. A lot of the art was nice, and I appreciate those two guards not having itchy trigger fingers. If you like, I can get you in contact with the Italian company that Mansude works through to sell the art pieces. I couldn't have just paid one of the artists there? No. Their work, and thus the profits, belongs to the state. That explains a lot. Zhong nods at this, and again, within ten minutes, she's asleep on my shoulder. I'm too worried to sleep, as I sit here trying to figure out the best possible escape route, in case we hit a pothole and the trolley bus flips over. I may have learned more than I ever wanted to about Korea, though... through the art, anyway. And that makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. What have I gotten myself into? Once we get out to stop, I nez... Once we get out to stop, I gently nudge Yong to wake. Thanks for today, Zhong. I liked touring with you. I enjoyed it as well. Shall we go inside and tell Yunji all about it? I guess we have no choice. Let's head on in.
These past three days have gone by so quickly, especially because of all the places I've gone with these two girls. It's kind of nice to kick back and relax a little after having another of Yunji's meals. I must admit, she does a great job with the limited food they have here in North Korea. Only thing is, now there's too much time to kill and nothing to do. Xiong and Yunji are sitting reading books. I'm just here on the floor describing what's going on in my head. Hey, don't you two have a radio somewhere? Maybe there's something we can listen to. Yes, we do have a radio. Actually, KBBC, KCBC should be airing Voice of Korea soon. Voice of Korea, what's that? It's most, it's mostly news on music, and the reading of original leaders' memoirs. It's the best radio program. You'll love it. I suppose it's better than staring at the ceiling. Can we tune in? Certainly. Let me go get the radio. I suppose it would be a good idea to listen to what's on the news, see if anything's happened recently. Maybe your government has finally apologized for your aggressive stance against Glorious Leader. You probably shouldn't hold your breath. I have no intention of holding my breath. It's... Never mind. I think I hear Zhang mumbling something about the antenna not being put back inside the radio correctly. Pretty sure she paired it with an unflattering comment about the nature of her sister's tidiness. Yunji, how many times do I have to tell you to push the antenna back into the radio so it doesn't get bent or broken? How do we know I was the last one to use the radio? The dial is set to the Korean soap opera station. You're the only person who listens to it. Wait, you guys have a soap opera station? Yes, well, the stories are very moving. The latest episode of Pathway to Pyongyang had its big finale last week. I'll pass on a summary. How about we just turn on the radio? Yes, that is a good choice. You don't want to get Yunji going on about her soaps. Zhong sets up the radio while Yunji mutters something about putting arsenic in the next batch of kimchi. Good thing she probably can't get her hands on any. They have a hard time getting food here as it is, let alone exotic poisons. Looks like they've got an old 80s style boombox complete with double cassette deck. The record button on deck 2 is missing though. Probably for the best. I don't think they play anything current here anyway. After fiddling with the dials, Zhong finally gets a signal. And almost immediately she snaps to attention while hearing the marching music coming through. Yunji has done the best has done the same thing, so I guess I better stand as well. And three consecutive march songs later we finally get to sit down. Wait a minute, you have three national anthems? Do not be absurd. Only the first song was our national anthem. The other two were songs for original leader and son of original leader. So in essence you have three anthems and I'd imagine a fourth in the works for Glorious Leader. Yes, I would think Glorious Leader will be getting an anthem as well. I'd consider starting a really comfortable shoe company for all the standing you'll have to do. Though I don't think your government would let me start a business. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So funny, Mr. Smarty Mouth. At least ours are original. Your country set its anthem to a British drinking tune. Well, at least it's not the German act anthem. That one is actually a drinking song. Well, depending on your circle of friends. <laughs> Hush, you two. The news is about to start. This is the voice of Korea. I'm your host, B. Gu Wang. Is that a real name? That guy definitely had a rough childhood. And today's top story. Glorious leader has declared the next two days as a national holiday to celebrate his triumph over the American dictator in trade negotiations. In this momentous victory, Glorious leader has said to have secured a trade deal with the American idiot in chief in exchange for a vastly superior armaments. While the details are still unclear, it appears he has sent a small payment to the head wingnut for what the Americans claim was their newest weapon, the 1T-10T missile system. 
Oh, it's an old joke, but it's still great. <sighs> Let us all hold a moment of silence and awe at our glorious leader's negotiation skills. Maybe I can sell. I can try and sell the glorious leader some chem light batteries if I ever bump into one. We get two days off. We can all do something together. We've already played. We've already done things together, like played you shoppily. I think she means we can have a group date together. Hey, but sister, I thought we were supposed to. We've done that for three days now. We're really at the point in time where we should do a group outing. Yeah, this does seem like the appropriate time for that. Let me see if I have this correct. For three days we have gone on single girl dates. Just one of us. And one plus of us. And now because of we are about to enter day four as we're quiet, we have a group outing. Yes, sister, that's how it's done. It just sounds so scripted. Well, sometimes you have to plan things out. Precisely. So for the next two days, it shall be all three of us together. Sharing the good times and making memories. So where will we go on this trip? Let me think about it for a bit. I nod and we again focus on the ongoing broadcast over the radio. And while our generals couldn't reach an agreement with Russian President Vladimir Putman on a summit date. Oh my god. The hope is that the Russians will meet with us soon to discuss our next shipment of voluntary laborers. Uh, you know what, guys? Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been fun, but it is now currently... Well, my phone has died of running out of battery, and it's really early. So I think it's time for me to go to bed. Alrighty, I'm going to defect to the main menu. Anyway, guys, it's been a great fun playing this game with you today. Anyway, I'm going to head to bed. Oh. Alrighty, fellas, this is my stream page, as you can see. It's been a pleasure. I will see you guys next time. Remember, long live Comrade Posadas. Long live Comrade High Commander. I love you all. And I promise I will have more intellectual content on the channel soon.